And welcome back. And I'm still with Godwin Tom, talent manager and music business consultant. And um, trust me, he's, he's, he's been everywhere. And in the, during the break, we were talking about um, the relationship between the diaspora yeah. and the home territories, Ghana, Nigeria. How good is that relationship so far? I think it's done great in terms of delivering certain things. Yeah. How better can it get? I think it's... I think the, in terms of identifying what the benefits have been so far, mm -hmm. the first thing is that connection, mm. right? So I remember at the time I came to London and everybody was Jamaican, right? True. <laughs> right? I remember that time. <laughs> <laughs> everybody was Jamaican because it wasn't so... You were, not a lot of people were so proud to it be African. It wasn't cool to be African. Right? It wasn't yeah. cool. Now that has, that's changing, right? So we have our own artists coming in to sell out 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, 20,000 seater venues. And I think what that has created is a new opportunity for us to say, wow, we actually have an audience that can generate revenue. Mm. We have an audience that would pay to go see a show. We have an audience that are willing to listening to the music, which means the African or Nigerian artists can actually get numbers on Spotify, can actually get numbers on Apple Music. These are relatively new things, right? right? Like four or five years. Exactly. About, yeah, you can yeah. get these numbers because there's the market in those regions. Mm. And what we now need to do is harness that. But what I think is also missing is the fact that that communication, mm. that we need to create a bridge, right, that links the diaspora's home and that link is not just December. We need to find a way that there's communication all year round to okay. ensure, okay, look, we want to push this person, okay. right? And that's a coalition that young people can actually take on as a and challenge drive, yeah. and say, look, this artist is a big artist. We want to push this artist. That would make them some of the most powerful people on the face of the earth mm. if they decide who they want to break into the UK. And that's a big deal. That's a street team coalition of and some mentality sort. as and well. And mentality yeah. of saying, do we have anything like that at the moment? Well, we have um, we have uh, the the ACSs, okay. right? Um, uh, but also, I think that it should be outside this universities because there's a limit to what they can Indeed, do. Yeah. Uh, we need to create that culture with professionals. We need to create exactly. that culture. Like we need to begin to buy up businesses. Mm. We need to begin to say, okay, we're responsible. Because right now, it's not in our hands. We don't own anything. Mm. So we need to have a coalition of people that own things that can say, look, we're going to introduce our own. Mm. So we're deciding that we're this conglomerate, we're buying this label. Mm. We're this conglomerate, we're funding this market, this, this hotel. This, mm -hmm. And we create that community. And that's synergy within the community. Yeah. Within the community where we're generating enough money because that's now easy for us. Because right now, the African promoter can't pay the Nigerian or African artist. Indeed. They can't pay because yeah. it's, they, they have limited resources. Mm -hmm. But if we start finding ways to generate revenue within the market, within our community, we have, we build, we create millionaires, mm -hmm. we create business people, we create owners of property, we, mm -hmm. we create owners of businesses. And that's more important than being a part of the system because to, to change the system, you need to sit on the table. Mm. I look at um, um, what role has social media played in bridging that gap? Very important role. Um, very important role, even if people still don't know how to use it. Yes. But uh, it's, social media connects people to, that you need to travel miles, thousands, thousands of miles see, yeah. to see. So a person can blow up in Nigeria without visiting the UK ever. You know what? We had um, the first, we brought the first Nigerian, which you probably know, yeah. pop Afrobeats at 2003. Yeah. yeah. At that time, and I tell this story all the time, at that time, a hit song in Nigeria, songs like Yahuze, yeah. or at the time, um, You Don't Hit My Car, it took six months minimum for that song to filter to, yeah. into the UK. It's multiple people and traveling. And two years to filter to America. <laughs> <laughs> America yeah. was always the last frontier, yeah. you know. Now, a song, um, we have just had Guilty Beats now on, on the show. Yeah. The song Akwaba, you break in Ghana today, you are breaking simultaneously. Yeah. So, and, and that's only down to social media. Yeah. It's down to social media and people connecting the dots, mm. right? So now I know that I can reach out to an OAP in the UK that is Nigerian and say, look, I have this song. Do you, what do you think it is? They mm. like it. Okay, fantastic. Let's push this song because it's a great song. Mm. Um, and yes, social media has played that part where you can actually identify that somebody is who they say they are. No stories. Right? So I can check. I know that, okay, if this person says I'm this guy on this radio station, on this show, you can, verify you can check. Almost, almost you can check. And I think that's a very important thing because so many people have very horrible stories. Um, a lot of international brands yeah. are looking, are kind of like making inroads, you know, 
brands that before, you know, your Sony's, they're all looking towards Africa. And what you hear mo most of the time, if you a year or so into these deals is like, the deals were not right. Yeah. The sign, the sign kind of like, for some deals were actually not deals, you yeah. know? So what type of deals exist? What type of deals should they, or what approach should they have to having these meetings, these ne negotiations? What are the things they should know? Because some people just get excited. Oh, Sony's trying to reach out to me, yeah. and they just sign the dotted lines, you yeah. know. I'm very soon into the contract, you know, a lot of things start to go wrong. So how do we start to change that narrative? Well, the first thing is that education thing we talked about, mm -hmm. right? Um, you talked about the different types of, of deals. Yes. So there are multiple deals, right? Mm -hmm. They've even added a new one now, which is an anti-360 deal. Um, I was coming to the 360 <laughs> deal thing <laughs> yeah. <after> yeah. <coughs> But the conversations vary from licensing deal where a label can say, I want to license one song or your EP or your album. So I'm not signing you as an artist, okay. but I'm going to give you money. I'm going to take your song and I'm going to distribute to generate revenue. Okay. So I'll give you money. Sometimes they say I'll give you money to of go course. record, okay. which is a production deal. And then some say we'll give you, we'll take the one you've recorded and okay. we'll go and sell it. That's a distribution um, deal. That's a distribution deal. Okay. Um, but most right now what's happening, and I have to address this, is most of these labels are giving artists artist deals, which is record deals, mm -hmm. and calling it licensed deals. And because people are not informed, of what the differences are. And what are the differences? So basically with an artist deal, which is a label deal, mm -hmm. it means that the label owns your masters, right? Which is mm -hmm. your, your live wire. Yeah, so okay. they, own, they own your property. And that's because they pay for it. So when and you in return? In return, they own your masters because they pay for it, right? Mm -hmm. But what happens now is they give you a license deal and then put a clause in the license deal that converts that contract into a master's deal, but it still has the title license deal. So more people are not paying attention. So there are people who have signed license deals, in quote. After that quick money. After that quick money. It's really small money. Mm. And then they've, they've realized later on that they don't own their content. And there's some contracts where these people backdate what they own to stuff you've done before you even met them. So, so basically they own you. Yeah. So my advice to people most of the time is before you even get a manager, get a lawyer. Right. Entertainment lawyer. Get an entertainment lawyer, an IP lawyer. Let them let them go through these contracts before you sign them. Um, the 360 deals, to be honest with you, it has its pros and has its yeah, cons. Yes, yeah. Right? Because most people forget that if I invest money, I expect to recoup. Return, yeah. it's, it's, it's just basic, standard, yeah. Right? And, and because the system is changing, it's still going to take a while. I know we're hearing 2 billion streams, 3 billion streams. But all what does it things, translate to here? In, in, in the actual sense of it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really trans translate to the m kind of money people were making in 2008 or 2009. Okay. Right? Or, sorry, in 1999 yeah, and 98 yeah. because then the numbers were higher. Mm -hmm. um, but still, it's a, pro it's a progression. Yeah, yeah, it's going to yeah, continue yeah. to go up. And the more people stream music, the more revenue will come in. But for now, labels are looking at it from an angle that the argument labels have rather is if I'm giving you money that blows your career up, Right, I put you in certain places. I ben I create benefits for you. Mm -hmm. It only makes sense for me to earn from whatever outcome is from that because my record sales aren't going as well as they were mm -hmm. 20, 30 years ago. So if I'm going to find ways to generate income, then we have to find a way around this. You can't just go and act after I've made you popular and say you won't pay me. Right, that's the argument. Mm -hmm. The argument against the 360 deal because what the 360 means is if I give you money and I sign you, I will earn from everything, everything yeah. that comes out of it. The argument is, well, not everything involves music. Some things involve my business, yeah. uh, my business acumen. Some things involve just my talent outside my career. But the labels argue, well, nobody would have known you if we didn't, <laughs> if we didn't put the money down. So it's looking at it from a, from a, look, from a fair standpoint mm -hmm. and saying there are benefits. What you as the artist want to do, you want to create opportunities in your contracts mm. to negotiate and argue. Um, some artists do what we now call 360, anti 360 deals. And that's a new concept. But the Which idea is? is instead of signing a deal with a label, mm -hmm. you go to a company, right? And you say, look, give me the money for my album and we'll use this album to promote your product, right? So, okay. so, the, so you fund it 
and in turn give marketing value to the company so they don't keep your masters because okay. they don't need it. Okay. They, they, they just need to push they whatever, to push whatever they're they doing. Yeah. So that's another angle and that's another Is that thing. Is popular that in Nigeria at the moment? Are there people not doing particularly, that? Mm. Not particularly, but it's becoming, it's becoming a thing because brands are beginning to notice uh, ways that they can use artists, and I use the word use carefully, but, <laughs> but they've found ways to say, look, let's engage you because you have this reach. And if artists understand the reach that they have and the engagement they can create, it's then easy to convince these brands. Okay. But a lot of people don't. We're going to have a very quick break, and when we come back, we'll still be with Godwin Tong. <laughs>